A Fox News alert as we go back to the U.N. We won't bore you with the speeches, but the Russians just put forth a resolution which, as you uh, might imagine, was fairly favorable to them and their Syrian friends, not so favorable to the United States, the United Kingdom, and France that were involved in the attack. Uh, to say it failed miserably uh, would be the understatement. Obviously, uh, the United States, the U.K. and France, all with unilateral vetoes there. Noteworthy, it's been the Russians that have been protecting the Syrians at the United Nations. Six separate resolutions at the Security Council that the Russians have vetoed to protect Bashar Assad and the Syrians specifically as it relates to chemical weapons. With that, we bring in Tom Rogan of The Washington Examiner. Good to see you, sir. Uh, this caught our eye from the New York Times this morning. In Moscow, a sense of relief after a limited Syria attack. And it appears as though both the Russians and the United States at the command level, certainly at the Mattis level and at their general staff level, went to great lengths to ensure that this did not escalate. Yes, I think there's an understanding on both parts, Leland, that there is a lethality that both elements can deliver to each other. But I also think for the Russians, the major point here is do these strikes endanger Assad's regime? And that's the critical Russian strategic interest. Clearly, no, they do not. And in that regard, I think the Russians quite relieved, quite happy. So the Russians, it's, it's unusual to sit here and be talking about the Russians quite relieved and quite happy. Is that tacit admission by the United States that we're not really willing to take them on, on not their home turf, but kind of sort of their home turf? Uh, to a degree, it is. It's the caveat to the mission accomplished, right? It's the caveat in the sense that the United States has given up effectively in trying to remove Bashar al-Assad from power. The Russians are very happy about that. And at the same time, I think it, the Russians, from their point of view, if they can consolidate Assad, if they can just absorb these little pinpricks as they see them, then you know what? Who cares? We'll complain. It's the pageantry in public, <laughs> but in behind the scenes, it's not a big deal. Yeah, you, you, you do get even, you sort of, even publicly, this telegraphing back and forth. It was like, you know, no, we didn't call them ahead of time, but we're very happy to report that no foreigners were killed in this. Right, right. And it's, it's again, it, it's a sort of, you know, it, it's a reflection of the fact that when you have two great powers, there isn't really a particular interest in escalating unless you have to. But is there a risk in not escalating? Is there a risk for President Trump? This isn't the first time we've hit the Syrians. The first right. time was back in 2017. We did even less than we did this time. Is there a risk in letting the Russians know Essentially, you've got veto power over U.S. military action. I, I think there is a profound risk. And I would think as much as there is a tactical effect here that seems significant, at the strategic level, the repeated statements that we, we might, we will do this again if we have to, that I think means in the coming months we should expect another chemical, chemical attack from Bashar Assad uh, with the, the Russians actually motivating to try and get the United States to blink and say, actually, we're not going to do it again a third time. So, so, in, so in other words, you, you view the calculation as, as a little bit more than Assad deciding to use chemical weapons to clear out yes. a given neighborhood. This was a test, essentially, by the Russians of the United States, of President Trump's resolve. I, I absolutely think so. For the United States, the impetus here is to try and deter against chemical weapons use around the world. It's not about the civilians who died. For the Russians, in the same way, it's not ultimately about Assad. It's about the region. It's about the Saudis, the Egyptians, the Iranians, the Israelis, all of them coming to the Russians, coming to King Putin's table and saying, we know you are the man to deal with. And, and ultimately, that is why I think the Russians so who, like to who, test. Who won this round? You know, in Tehran, uh, in Beirut, route uh, in Bahrain, in Cairo, as they, as they sit around and uh, uh, smoke Nagila and have some shashuka, yeah. uh, who, who do they decide won this? Did President Trump win this or did President Putin win this? I think President Trump wins this round, but like boxing, there's another round coming up very soon, and I think they anticipate they will win that and ultimately so, win the match. So, so far, no knockouts, but... No, absolutely not. Po point, point to President Trump. Uh, President Putin, though, seems to still have the scorecard on his side right absolutely. now. Absolutely. Putin always plays the long game. Well, uh, he, uh, he's been managed to do that for a long time, yes, too, has, and, and, come, and come back. A lot to talk about on the McLaughlin Group. We'll Thank watch you. for it. Good Thanks a lot, Tom, Appreciate as it. always. We're actually just getting, this is breaking now, a statement coming in from Vladimir Putin, hmm. president of Russia. He says, Russia condemns in the strongest possible terms the attack against Syria, where Russian military personnel are assisting the legitimate government in its counterterrorism efforts. Through its actions, the U.S. makes the already catastrophic humanitarian situation in Syria even worse and bring suffering to civilians. In fact, the U.S. 
uh, panders to the terrorists. So that's mm. a pretty strong statement there from Vladimir Putin, obviously very upset about the airstrikes that happened overnight. Will they respond militarily in any way? How much will they flex those muscles? That is the big question. And then how the U.S. responds from there. That's exactly right. Let's bring in Dr. Sebastian Gorka, Fox News national security strategist and former uh, deputy assistant to President Trump. You just heard that statement from Vladimir Putin. He didn't condemn in the strongest possible terms the gassing of people, but instead right. condemns us. What do you make of that? And says that we are only promoting the violence. When a former KGB colonel condemns our actions, you know we took the right actions. He's a thug. That's who he is. This is the same government that yesterday, and this is not a joke, Look it up on your search engine. This is the same government whose defense ministry spokesman yesterday said it was the British government that executed the chemical weapons attack in Duma last week. The Russians couldn't care less about human. Don't make me laugh. Humanitarian mm. exigencies. This, this is a regime that has propped up Assad, a mass murderer. This is a regime that invaded an independent country, Ukraine, not too long ago. This is a country that supports bad guys everywhere. So if they're clamoring and making a lot of noise, you know Donald Trump took the right decision last night. But Dr. Gorka, night. that statement is a perfect example of what President Trump is dealing with when it comes to Vladimir Putin and with Russia, how they continue to lie through their teeth. How does the president move forward, forward here? How does he deal with Russia specifically, other than calling them out last night? Everything that, so the, the president is a patriot, He's the new commander in chief, but he's a pragmatist. And he said, a, he said it, you know, the week he became president or won the election, he gave a press conference in Trump Tower where he said, in theory, I'd like us to have better relations with Russia. Why? It's a nuclear power. It's got 11 time zones. It's on the UN National Security Council. So it makes sense to have decent relationships with Russia. But even back then, a year and a half ago, he said, if that's not possible, so be it. If they continue to do things that are against international norms, if they exploit and exacerbate instable, unstable conditions around the world, then we can't cooperate with them. And last night we sent a very clear message, and Pete was right. When they didn't respond, when they stayed quiet, uh, you know that they got the message that it is not business as usual and they can no longer get away with murder like they have in the past. So, Dr. Gorka, aside from Russia, the message also being sent to Iran and even North Korea. Absolutely, Griff. A absolutely. L last night was about our response morally to the atrocious weapons that are chemical weapons. But also, more importantly, it's a message to anybody who supports this kind of regime and also may be thinking, like North Korea, may be thinking about their own potential use of mm -hmm. weapons of mass destruction. So on, on all counts, morally, when it comes to our national security, that these weapons should not be used against our people, our citizens, and when it comes to other nations who need to be read the Riot Act, mm -hmm. yesterday's uh, intervention served all of those purposes at the same time. Dr. Gorky, you hate to get political in moments like this, but of course the haters of this president immediately do so, saying he doesn't have the ability or right to strike, uh, he doesn't have a plan. What do you say to their constant, their sudden constitutional arguments that this is not an action he could have or should have taken as commander-in-chief? It's funny. So uh, I, I didn't hear them criticizing the last president when in one weekend mm -hmm. he bombed seven countries. In one weekend, our forces were engaged in seven different nations around the world. I didn't hear much protesting from the Democrats when, this, when the last president, President Obama, without due process, with a Hellfire missile, killed a U.S. citizen and his son in Yemen. Funny, if, if the mm. left didn't have double standards, they wouldn't have any standards at all. <laughs> and, and the president, according to Article 2, he is absolutely in his constitutional authority to use military force when there is an exigent system. This is the situation. There is, mm. This isn't a state of war. We're not invading another country. This isn't 1941. There was a threat to the international mm. order, and we had to take action. Well, and it's important, because you you mentioned the Obama years. It's so important to look back on that time in history because that's ultimately what led us to right here yes. what we are dealing with yes. today. So let's just take a look back at some of those moments back with uh, Obama, uh, Rice, and John Kerry. We have been very clear 
to the Assad regime. A red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. We could cut the deal that got 100 percent of the declared chemical weapons out of Syria. We were able to find a solution that actually removed the chemical weapons that were known from Syria in a way that the use of force would never have accomplished. Uh, you heard it there, 100 percent of the chemical weapons gone. I, I give your team full credit who's working in the background. The We've got some great producers had, on our the team. Fact that, the fact that you had that ready is, is superb. Yeah, I mean, look, that's, that's why we're here. We had eight years of what? Think about it. We're the last commander-in-chief say we're going to lead from behind. Well, Pete Hexeth, how many people do you know? How many officers lead from behind? Mm -hmm. It's an oxymoron, right? You can't lead from behind. They talked about strategic patience, which means what? We're not going to do anything. We're going to let other actors act. Well, what happened? We had a Dantean inferno around the world because of that lack of American leadership. We had Russia invade Ukraine. We had the rise of ISIS. We had China building fake islands with military bases on them. We, have, we had the JCPOA Iran deal that actually strengthened and emboldened Iran, which is the key sponsor of Assad. That all changed at 12.01 on January the 20th when Donald Trump became president. And now he's fixed fixing all the disastrous policy mistakes made by Kerry, Clinton, and Obama. Phrase of the morning, Dantean Inferno, because of a lack of American leadership. Uh, doctor, thank you very much Dr. for your time. Dr. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Doctor. All thank right. you. Absolutely. And in particular, we've been watching what the reaction from the Russian government is. They claim that these strikes are an attack against them. Now, Syria right now is the battleground for a number of different conflicts and a few proxy wars that are ongoing there. Russia and Iran are allied with the Assad regime there, essentially keeping it in power. The Russian ambassador to the United States uh, has just provided a statement. Anatoly Antonov, he says, quote, again, we are being threatened. We warn that such actions will not be left without consequences. Insulting the president of Russia is unacceptable and inadmissible. The U.S., the possessor of the biggest arsenal of chemical weapons, has no moral right to blame other countries. Now, over the past several days, Russia has warned against an attack on its ally, the Assad regime. The U.K., the U.S., France, and others have fought with Russia at the United Nations Security Council over this. Uh, Russia has denied the chemical weapons attack and then blamed the British government for staging it. Fairly. Russia agreed in 2013 to destroy Syria's chemical weapons. The U.S. says the Russians enabled the Syrian government to carry out these attacks. It also says the Syria attacks and Russia attack on a former spy in the UK normalizes chemical weapons use, which is the reason why they've pushed back in this manner. Now, the Pentagon says it designed these attacks to avoid any Russian forces uh, that they've identified or might be in that area. But just yesterday in his Senate confirmation hearing, the Secretary of State designee, Mike Pompeo, acknowledged publicly that the U.S. military has already killed hundreds of Russians in one particular fight and attack there. Uh, there were previous reports that those Russians uh, were mercenaries fighting uh, with uh, with forces there. Now, Russian, Iran and Turkey met last week to discuss the future of Syria. The Iranian government has yet to react to this, but we are getting some reaction from the Syrian government. Just a tweet uh, at the Syrian presidency page. They tweeted it out in Arabic. This is a translation from the Associated Press saying, quote, good souls will not be humiliated. Now, while Pompeo waits for his confirmation vote in the U.S. Senate, uh, the acting Secretary of State is Deputy Secretary John Sullivan. He's down in Peru right now uh, at an international summit there, though officials say he has been involved in conversations uh, remotely that are ongoing here in D.C. Shannon? All right. Rich, that's in live for us tonight at the State Department. Thank you very much, Rich.